Good morning, everyone. This is Trackman 44. Obviously, you can tell we're working on an old tractor here. It's Massey Harris, about a 1951 Model 30. We just put a 12 volt alternator on, but uh, it's time to get ready to service the gas tank. This thing has been setting for years and years and years, and so there's a, a lot of rust flakes and some superficial rust inside the gas tank. So I'm going to go ahead and take the tank off, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, electrolysis for rust removal on the inside of a gas tank. Now that you've got the gas tank off, there's a couple of preparatory things you got to do. Uh, pull off your, your sediment bulb if it happens to have one mounted on the tank and replace it with a pipe plug, you know, something to, uh, to seal liquid or water into the tank. Second thing you got to do is if you're lucky enough to have a power washer, you want to power wash the inside of this tank as good as what you can to dislodge most of the barnacles, uh, clean it all out as much as possible. And electrolysis is what we're going to be talking about. Now bear in mind, I ain't telling you all to do this. Uh, but this is how I do it. I've done it on, on a number of them. It's not limited to tractors, not limited to gas tanks. It's any type of ferrous metal, as long as you can get that ferrous metal inside a non-conductive tank to where you can hook up your battery charger to it. If you decide to do this process, it gives off a hydrogen gas, uh, which is obviously highly explosive. So if you don't disconnect your charger when you're taking your components out of the mixture, and you arc the uh, battery charger clamps together, you're going to create a spark, and you're creating a spark right in the midst of that hydrogen gas that's coming, uh, you know, out and around your tank or your, your parts and pieces. Okay, we all remember the Hindenburg, right? Well, I'm not quite old enough, you know, but I think my much older brother is. But uh, at any rate, the Hindenburg exploded because of hydrogen gas. That's what it's filled with to create that, that buoyancy or that airlift. We're not going to create near that much to lift the gas tank off the ground, but we will create enough to create an explosion. There's more than one guy uh, in doing what I'm attempting to do here, have exploded their gas tanks, you know, hurt themselves a little bit, and done some non-repairable damage to them. I very seldom talk about safety to a great extent, but this is of the utmost. It is definitely explosive. <laughs> the problem with doing a, the, a gas tank is it's the inside of the tank that you're wanting to deal with. Now, if the outer surface of this tank was what's rusty, it'd be no problem at all because it'd be real simple to put it in a vat, connect up your charger, your, your gases and everything, you know, will just dissipate. Not a big deal at all. But because it's on the inside, we have to be very, very careful. Well, you know, when you start your charging leads together, you know, they arc and they spark. If you make contact between the negative post and the positive post during this period, you're going to create an arc and a spark. You can damage your battery charger as well as give yourself a bad day in the explosion department. So unfortunately what you have to do, you're limited to removing the rust through the gas cap opening. What I elect to do is use a, either a round rod like this or a flat bar stock and drop it down in the tank. Very first and foremost, you have to make sure that that doesn't bottom out and ground on the bottom of the tank. So it's got to be about so much shorter than the bottom of the tank. Second thing you have to be sure of is that you have a way to insulate this from this through the opening. And so what I've done is I take and I wrap electrical tape around there so that it, there's no way it can slide sideways and create a con connection. And also use a rubber pad like this right here that'll insulate it from setting on top. But to hold it in place, I just drill a hole and put a nail in it. Like I said, you can do that with a bar stock or a round stock, whatever. Now that you've got this setting on here, what happened? You're sealing off that area. If you seal that area off, you give nowhere for that expanding gases to expand to, except for it's got to force itself out around that. So what I do is I take a little piece of wire, peel that up, and now all around the perimeter of this is going to allow that escaping gas to just rise up and out of there and into the atmosphere. Uh, and once again, you're going to be doing this outside or under a lean to or something like that, but not in an enclosed area. Let's talk about specific gravity. You know water has a specific gravity of 1. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, be 0 degrees Celsius, and it has a specific gravity of 1. Now, we have to increase the specific gravity of the water to get it to become more conductive. By conductive, we're, we have to think about what, what we're talking about. We're going to be transferring the rust from the surfaces of the inside of that gas tank to the sacrificial rod. So we have to have electron flow in order for that to happen. And for that to happen, we have to be able to conduct those electrons or that, that transference of electrons through that water. Plain water itself will work. It works just a little bit slower 
because the conductivity of that water is lower than water with something added to it. So now what we like to do to add to it is take a washing soda or a washing soda compound like Arm & Hammer. You add the Arm & Hammer, I, and this here is about a 15 gallon tank. I'm probably gonna put a half a cup of Arm & Hammer. Then we're gonna go ahead and start the process. But that'll give us a high enough specific gravity to where it's going to create that conductivity so that the electrons can move. Now you have to ask yourself, okay, if it moves electrons from one piece of metal to the other, how do we figure out how to do that? Think about DC theory. Any electronic classes or electrical classes at all, uh, you'll remember back in the recesses of your mind uh, that in a DC circuit, electron flow is from negative to positive. Okay, and that coincidentally is why in the old days on the six volt starting systems on tractors and old cars and trucks prior to 55 and, new, and earlier, they had positive grounds because they found out that it takes more push for the electron to jump when your points open up, for your electrons to jump to create that spark whenever you're forcing it to go to the positive side from the negative side. So they felt that that six volt because it took more of a push created a hotter spark so that you could initiate the starting procedure of your of your older vehicle. Uh, 12 volts has changed all that, you know, and we all have everything down negative ground and all that. And there's all kinds of reasons for that, but I don't even want to get into that subject there at all. And that is very much a cliff notes. So that's not any kind of detailed explanation at all. But at any rate, you take your negative, black negative, you get a good ground on the uh, outside of your tank, and then you take your positive and put your positive on this here. Then you're ready to, to begin the process. Once you've made sure that you've established all those steps. Again, what you have to do is you have to make sure, absolutely positively make sure, that you support or you do whatever's necessary with your cables off of your battery charger to where there's no way in the middle of the night or whenever you're not here, it falls over and comes in contact with the tank. If it comes in contact with the tank, that's positive to negative. It creates the arcing and the sparking, and you're going to give yourself an issue. And you have to make sure that cannot slide down and, and happen. The very first time I did this, and it was on some kind of a some kind of a tractor part in a in a plastic trash can. I went back later, and my sacrificial piece was just as shiny as could be. Everything that was on the sacrificial piece had transferred over to the the, the material that I was cleaning off. If that happens, just reverse your polarity. Unplug your charger, of course, and reconnect them and make sure that you have the rusty part connected to the negative and the positive part connected to the, uh, the part that you want to attract the rust to. Now this is a long and drawn out process. It's going to take you know several days simply because we're limited to the one rod down inside the gas cap. It's a line of sight kind of transference. Uh, so this guy right here in the, in the center is going to be pulling from all the way around and we have to ask it to pull up from the bottom as well as down from the top. Can't stress to you enough, this time is one time old Tractor Man 44 talking about safety. This is, this is dangerous. I mean, if you do it incorrectly, it's dangerous. Use your wits about yourself, use your head, use a little common sense, you're going to have no issue at all. And the good thing about it is all your old rusty tools and stuff like that, man, it works wonders on that. Okay, now this is old time charger. Now you can actually use those little one amp trickle chargers, not a battery tender, not a floating charger, and none of the fancy new chargers. So hopefully that's making a little sense to you. Time to put in a little bit of arm and hammer. You have to increase the specific gravity of the, uh, of the water above uh, a 1.0. So just something to create conductivity. Then the next very important key component, because remember you're, build, you're creating hydrogen gas whenever it goes through this process. And so you, the key thing to remember is you have to make sure that you're totally insulated. We can go through that again. I've got electrical tape. It's a rubberized tape wrapped around this here so where if it comes in contact with the neck, it won't shard out. And I've also got a rubber piece of inner tube here that's tied up so that the hydrogen gas can escape out the outside edges. And we're going to be attaching the positive post here and the negative to the tank. And then we're going to start the process. Now I've got to go back to business of filling it up with water. I just take an old welding rod and bend me up a, a loop on the end, make me a stir, stir stick out of it. And kind of like to mix up that um, arm and hammer that I got down in there. Now we can stick this guy down in there. I got the ground clamp grounded really, really well. Scratched it off clean. Now if you can see, I've got it centered. It's insulated. It's zip tied to a clamp right here to hold, make sure that uh, even if the wind blows, it's not going to move it. And of course I've got the uh, 
battery charger right over here. Within 10 minutes of increasing the specific gravity, you can see the uh, the bubbling, the rust and everything bubbling out around. Now that those bubbles and stuff are hydrogen gas. Again, I cannot stress the importance enough of how you do not want to do this inside. Definitely won't, don't want to uh, work on it with the voltage on because of the explosive hydrogen gas. And here it is after another 20 minutes or so. So you can imagine what's going on down inside. Here's another update. Maybe two hours. I don't know. I'm not really keeping track of the time. But you can see exactly how that's coming out of there. And take a look. See the bubbles forming and breaking? Hydrogen gas. We're ready to service again to pull the sacrificial piece out. Again, uh, remember safety. Power off before you go to disconnect it or messing with the leads. So the power's off. We set this off to the side. Two things you have to remember, I, I need to point that out. You need to have the tank completely full of water for two reasons. First, there has to be water present on the rusty surface in order for the electrolysis to function, number one. And number two, you don't want to have an open void like so much or more of the, the top of the tank open because as that hydrogen gas is generated inside, it'll accumulate up inside that dome. And if you do create a spark or something of that nature, you're going to uh, create one heck of a, a nasty situation for yourself. Just knocked it off the edge of a file, uh, rubbed it down with a rag, stuck it on a bell sander, and just shined up a portion of it. This is probably going to be the last time I clean the tank uh, before I dry it out and go about the process of sealing it. This is the sixth effort over a course of a three-day period. Now that I've got the rod out, you can see here's the uh, the original 5 8 thickness and right here is where I had the rubber and then you can see the physical change in the size of the rod. Now once the flushing is complete you're left to your own creativity on how you want to uh, dehumidify and dry the inside of the tank. This has uh, been successful for me for a number of years. I just got a cheap dollar store uh, hair dryer and I just hung it with a strip of metal from up on the ceiling that gives it a little bit of flexibility and and I do not attach it directly to the tank inlet. I let the pressure of the air blowing back and then the, the, the created by the fan to kind of move it around a little bit and relieve that pressure that's inside there because if you duct tape this together or put it right on there you're going to over overtax and over uh, overheat the element fairly fairly quickly because that element has to have a certain amount of air flowing across it in order to maintain a certain temperature rise and not burn out. Like I said, you're up to your creativity. Turn it on low. There's a real good example of how it should, uh, how it's going to do. So it's removing that moisture quite well. But there was very seldom a problem with these until we started getting oxygenated fuels and a percentage of alcohol in your fuels. Oxygenated fuels create a problem in, in and of their own insofar as they have a tendency to phase separate. But the uh, alcohol in the fuel, in my estimation, has a tendency to draw moisture. Because in commercial refrigeration, if we'd had a, uh, ever had a system that had extreme amount of moisture inside the refrigeration circuit, we would actually admit uh, alcohol to the system in order to rapidly evaporate that moisture and then have it carried out with the vacuum pump. So I know it has an affinity for, for moisture, and that's what the, the downfall is of this new gas on these old tractors, this formulated fuel for these new fancy cars and fancy engines. It ain't for these old tractors, in my estimation. Hopefully a pint will be, uh, will be enough. This particular brand here, I've not used, it's the one I'm going to try, it says it's got to be stirred uh, thoroughly. But anytime I have to stir something, I just grab a welding rod, knock the flux off of it, and beat a little circle on the end of it, or a semblance of a circle. It takes a while for it to run all over the whole area. So you got the drift, so you know what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of hours. I'm going to be rotating this tank. I take double or triple coats of uh, plastic and then stretch it tight and then rubber band around it to, uh, for whenever I rotate it to the top. You can see, obviously, I have it upside down uh, in a five-gallon bucket. Not very much left over. Probably about uh, four or five thimblefuls, maybe. This has been about 14 hours after it's been applied. You can see the tank coat is completely covering all services. This is a POR15 fuel tank sealer. 
it's the first time I ever used this product. I've used five or six different uh, brands. Uh, some of them red, some of them green. Oh, it's recommended too. All the manufacturers recommend various times to let it cure before you put product in it. This particular one here says 96 hours. So what I'm going to do, put my hair dryer on low, and I'm going to go ahead and warm that and keep it warm for at least 24 hours uh, before I re reinstall the gas tank on the tractor. Then I'll probably wait another you know week for ever putting gas in it. Uh, I'm uh, very excited about this product. I think this is going to be the one that I'm going to try to keep track of and try to use from now on. So, all right, that's it. I'm done. This video is over. This track band 44. <laughs> I am out of here, man.